We'll start off with the Pan Am one because that's the one that you spent a lot of uh, spent a lot of time on, and um, I think the thing that's I interesting about um, Pan Am is that you know beyond its well, so it was originally created in 1927 uh, and it was kind of an aggregate uh, company, and it was really uh, led by a gentleman named Juan Tripp, and what he did is he really opened up uh, South America to the United States. It was very, I think, pretty much at the at the forefront of using modern technology to expand the reach of opportunity for you know U.S. citizens to either commercially or just leisurely travel uh, 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 around the world. And um, you know what's what's interesting is that the, the company uh, operated in an environment in a very heavily regulated environment, and then in the 1980s when uh, deregulation happened. They kind of had a really hard time struggling against, you know, um, new business or new competitors that came in and were focusing solely on price. They had a, a history and a culture of really not having to worry so much about price. They eventually did go bankrupt. I think it was in 19, yeah, 1991. Uh, but what I think is interesting from a, you know, a historical standpoint is how the just I guess the iconography of how this particular business was able to survive even you know culturally here in the United States you know whether you're talking about movies or TV shows or or things like that too so um, I, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ask you Bob you know given this particular uh, uh, business why do you think that this particular business is so important to uh, American history well, number one, it was a way to travel around the world easily without having to go th on ships, and you know it, it was a lot faster way of traveling. It, in fact, um, Pan Am started by carrying the mail for the U.S. government and, and carrying mail around the world, and that was that was the predecessor to uh, carrying passengers and things like that. And then they got into seaplanes because they didn't even have airports to land the planes. <laughs> so they had a you know. So when you look at how the whole industry evolved. It started, you know, with carrying the mail. It started with a lot of them seaplanes. It started with building airports and all these other businesses started um, gathering around to make the company successful, make the business and the whole industry successful. And like you said earlier, they didn't have a lot of competition because it was, um, it wasn't, it was regulated, but it was regulated to keep the competition out because they wanted to make sure these companies survived. And when deregulation came along, all of a sudden there was competition, and a lot of these companies that were there, like Eastern Airlines, Pan Am, and others, you know, Laker Airlines, remember them, and, mm -hmm. and others, you know, they were trying to, they were going to be the low cost airlines and things like that. But, but competition, you know, it, it sounds great in the beginning. But at the end, you know, all of a sudden service starts going down, customers don't come, and then other companies start evolving, and that's where we are today, basically. With that. Yeah, and I think it's interesting. It's it is. There's a several economic lessons in there. I mean, when you are sort of in a uh, monopoly uh, position, mm -hmm. you know, it's easier for you to draw out economic rents for the service that you provide. Um, but you also have a lot more capital to sort of reinvest in the business and to create new technologies. And I think to your point about you know, uh, in the early days of, of, of sort of almost a protectionist environment, the government wanted to make sure that, you know, like you said, these businesses uh, were to survive. I think there was probably a little bit of lesson in terms of the growth of the railroads during the 1800s and how competitive those businesses mm -hmm. were, where they were taking, they were, they were taking in investor capital, and in many cases, there, there, there were some cases where two competing rail lines were literally being laid right next to each exactly, other. Exactly. So it was a really terribly inefficient use of resources and ended up becoming a waste of, of shareholder capital. And then when you fast forward to the point to once these businesses have matured, right, you would then open up competition and, you know, the, the theory is that the consumer benefits in having a lower cost and more choice. Uh, but I think the flip side is that you said that uh, um, the service is, is right. The cost has to come from somewhere, right? right. And so that the the services had to decline. Uh, no frills airline, which is I guess where kind of where we're at now. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So, and I just also wanted to just touch a little bit in terms of economic growth as well. <coughs> you know, when you mentioned as this business grew, the country grew as well. I mean, you're talking about the investment in, uh, you know. Uh, local municipalities would, you know, create an airport authority and then they would, 
create jobs, right, for building those uh, airports and making that commercial traffic or even leisure traffic uh, available to the public. And like you said, the other previous alternative, I mean, you're talking about taking, you know, weeks to travel across the Atlantic, and now, you know, as, uh, as, uh, as uh, uh, you know, people can just within a matter of hours now travel across the, across the Atlantic. So it's a huge leap forward in terms of uh, material benefit there. All right, so that was is is Pan Am. Is there anything else that you? The only other thing I would add is I was reading somewhere <laughs> that in the 1920s that the United States produced or uh, manufactured cl uh, uh, approximately 90 percent of the world's airplanes. Air planes. Right. Yeah, you know, and like I said, well, when I was talking about uh, you know maybe uh, cities and municipalities benefiting from uh, from uh, their local airports, there was at least a half a dozen businesses that were associated with the planes themselves. Absolutely. Boeing and McDonnell Douglas and Lockheed and Cessna and and so uh, they all kind of benefited from this capital uh, raise and, sure. and, and the all money the support businesses that ca that come all the support businesses around, sure. exactly right and all the capital that was raised through these ticket prices was distributed back to these aircraft manufacturers mm -hmm. and and so there was a uh, some some real economic growth there. Absolutely. And you know, one other point that we mm -hmm. didn't mention on that is yeah. think of all the tourism that's generated by having or in the early days the airports there. Before then people couldn't really get to a lot of these places. Once they built the airport, it generated a whole lot of other industries because Yeah, of yeah, you're hundred percent right. That's kind of a legacy benefit, you know, where mm -hmm. and, and uh, how these how these airports are constructed in, in many ways are, you know, the city ends up uh, borrowing money mm -hmm. and repays that money with taxes that have been levied on exactly its citizens, right. and so you know there's a uh, there's that cost benefit right mm -hmm. that's associated with that. So 